All right. Hello, guys. Welcome to our Lesson 7 discussion for the J15 Environmental Science. So here is my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, we're done with the three unit learning outcomes to identify the major environmental factors, discuss the scope of human ecology and the succession, and identify the major biome. So at this point, so we are done on the coverage for the second examination for your second exam. So the last lesson is to identify the major benefits of biodiversity and discuss the interrelations of the society and the environment and health. Okay, for the next slide, slideshow. Okay, so the, uh, let's review first the biomes. So the biomes that you have, you, you've just heard from the lesson six of an incredible array of protective living species, those um, taiga, the tropical rainforest, the temperate forest, the desert, the um, grassland, and so on. So the, our life takes place in a wondrous ranges of sizes, colors, forms, life cycles, and interrelationships from the dry desert to the melting rainforest, from the tallest mountain tops to the deepest ocean trenches. Species diversity and the complex ecological relationships set unique productive features for the biosphere. The existence of the living species Biodiversity also makes the earth a safer place to live. So the importance of this biodiversity is for our, um, uh, the benefits in our environment. So we, it balances the ecosystem, diba. Right? So if there is a lot of species of plants in this certain um, area, that means that this specific area is very healthy. Because, ayun nga, naka-survive yung mga plants and animals. So they are not um, dying with all the pollution, uh, the man-made destruction, and the natural um, calamities or disaster. So the sustainability of the ecological process and functions includes three aspects of biodiversity. So number one is the genetic diversity. So it is a measure of the variety of variations between an individual species with the same genes. From the word genetics, the study of genes. So our um, individual uniqueness, which is our genes of that certain one or individual species. Number two is that species diversity describes the number of different types of organisms between a human population or an ecosystem. So, species diversity, that means the number of a different types of organisms, like, for example, uh, uh, species of plants, grass, a forest, or trees, and then certain group of animals, such as birds, um, mammals, reptiles, and so on. So, it counts the number of reptiles living on that area. Another species is those birds. Another is those plants. So on. The third one is the number of niches, traffic rates, and ecological processes capturing the resources, sustaining the food chains, and recycling materials in the system shall be determined by the ecological diversity. Psychological diversity counts all the number of niche, the traffic rates, the traffic level, the uh, primary, secondary, and the tertiary traffic level, yung sa food chain, ninyo, and the ecological processes. And redundancy in each of the these classes increases the resistance of the biomes. So it could also be a result, good result of that number of species that could also be a good biome or living on that natural habitat. K-biodiversity can bring a lot of benefits. They may 
help biological ecosystems survive environmental stress and recover from threats such as the burning, drought, storms, or invasions of pests. So yun siya, di ba? Biodiversity is very important in setting up with certain um, area or location. And then some species are likely to survive disturbances in a diverse community so that the ecological functions persist even if the certain resident species disappear. It is estimated that the natural predators and rivals control 95% of the world's possible pests and disease-carrying species. Maintaining the biodiversity may be vital for the control of pests and other ecological functions, and there is also a spiritual and artistic interest of this biodiversity. So in order for the speci uh, animal species or plant species could survive, so uh, their uh, biodiversity would maintain, like for example, the prey and predator in a relationship. So, uh, if marami na yung prey, so yung uh, role ng predator is kakainin niya yung prey niya para naman mabalance siya sa kanyang ecosystem. May also control the pests, di ba? Uh, Makasurvive siya sa mga any natural na mga phenomenon. So, the U.S. Fish and the Wildlife Service estimates that Americans spend $104 billion annually on the recreation related to the wildlife. This is 25% more than $81 million billion spent on a new cars last year. So, this recreation is always worth much more than the resources which can be extracted from an environment, such as fishing, hunting, hiking, camping, and other activities which are focused on nature, also have a cultural significance. Uh, the U.S. government focuses on the preservation and conservation of their wildlife species because yun siya, diba, it is very important to really take good care of environment, um, just like what is happening on this current um, situation we are facing today, the COVID-19 pandemic. So, it is a result of the human uh, species um, overpopulation, the rampant use of the resources, diba? and then there also a news that was mentioned by President Duterte that COVID-19 pandemic may not kill us humans, but also the climate change or the climate crisis that we are facing today. So both practices include the exercise and mentally restorative interaction with nature. So the idea of biodiversity is often important. Even if you never see a tiger or a blue whale, knowing that these animals exist may be important or gratifying. That idea is called the value of existence. So even though we may not see those animals here in our area, in our uh, local in Panabu City, but we should really take good care of those um, species because kakaunti na yun din sila. Just like also um, one of my documentaries, so this past few days, I uh, start watching Eyewitness by Cara David, yung documentary niya about elephants sa Thailand. So yung mga tao doon is ginagamit nila yung elephant as para maka-attract ng mga tourists. So sinasakyan siya ng mga tao. Uh, yung population ng elephant from... Uh, million at yun sila, or one, uh, four million or six million, I think. So ngayon is 50,000 na lang yung uh, population nila because uh, they cannot tend to survive because of our human activities. Okay, the definition of organisms is central in their sending of biodiversity. So what is an organism? Species are usually distinctive. A distinct species that survive because they are capable of producing fertile descendants. But some animals, they reproduce asexually or asexual reproduction. So they don't need sexual intercourse, just selfing or just themselves. So part of their body would reproduce or would separate, will multiply. Others do not reproduce in nature simply because they do not encounter each other naturally. So it happens just on itself. Due to those ambiguities or uh, not clear definition or function of that, some evolutionary biologists, so these professionals, prefer 
the phylogenetic tree concept. So if you're familiar with the phylogenetic tree, that as humans uh, coming from the invertebrate animals, kasi sila lang yung survive a long time ago or a million years ago. And then later on, there are some um, ang first species of animals na uh, nag-thrive na is yung mga chordate, is mga fish, di ba? So yun siya. Because mostly, ang ating earth, it comprises water. So mostly, mga fish lang yung survive. Wala pa man yung mga tao, di ba? Unlike your mga apes, di ba? Mga homo erectus, homo habilis. And then later on, there is us humans. So on the last day, it was mentioned from the Bible, seventh day that the man was created. Uh, the first man is yun, was written from the Bible, Adam and Eve, di ba? So if you're familiar. So, which describes the genetic similarities of each organisms. So, tayo mga taos, we are also related sa mga genes, similarities, sa mga chordate or mga fish kasi may backbone sila or any other mammals because yun yun, nag sila or may um, boom sila, yun siya. In addition, the evolutionary species con concept defines the species by the history of evolution and the common ancestors. All of these methods are based on our deoxyribonucleic acid or the DNA analysis to establish the similarity between the species. Okay, we have here the classification, table of classification. There was a growing awareness of how all living things are related to each other. An idea called the biodiversity. This recognition started when a naturalist began to classify organisms in a natural world using this taxonomy. So taxonomy is a branch of biology that studies a system devised by a Swedish scientist, Carl Linnaeus. So ito yung siyang taxonomic rank. For example, kingdom. So for the anim all animals is kingdom animalia and then for the plants is plantae. Then for the phylum is chordata. So we are chordate or corda because we have these backbones or mga bones or mga buto or buko. Yun siya. Then for the phylum here is angiosperm, spermophyta, angiosperm. So it means it is a flowering plant. Class mammalia. So we are mammals for the animals. Then eudicotidae. For the class, eudicotidae. Eudicotidae, sorry for the pronunciation, for this plant, because eudicot, so it means false, or they have two cotyledons. For the order is we are primate, and then for the order is ranunculalis for this plant, and our family is hominidae, and then for this plant is ranunculaceae, then for our genus is homo, and then it's ranunculus, and then species, our species is sapiens, and then species is and then our common name is human, and then is this flower is called a buttercup. So this uh, uh, flower can be found in a broad, I think in the U.S., yellow color and kanyang flower, but it's not a sunflower. I first gonna mention in here, I first gonna observe dito is sunflower, to siya, but it's not, it is a buttercup. So, homo sapiens ang ating scientific name, di ba? But there are some apes, di ba, or mga primate na homo habilis, homo erectus, di ba? Yung may encounter niya during elementary days or high school days. But they are not the same with us because tayo humans or homo sapiens, we are having this higher order thinking skills, our um, rational mind. So Carl, Carl Linnaeus or Carolus Linnaeus is the, known as the father of taxonomy. It is the hierarchical system of the classifying and naming organisms that draws on the mind's ability to locate and is specific in the funnel of this naming of organisms. Okay, in the year 2010, the United Nations announced the World Year of Biodiversity. The name given to the abundance of life on earth and the natural patterns it forms is called the biological diversity or the biodiversity. This diversity is also understood in terms of the plants, the animals, or those minute or very small organisms, microorganisms. So around 1.75 million species, mostly small creatures such as those insects, 
in an example of invertebrate animals or no backbone are known. Many scientists say that 13 million species currently exist, but estimates vary from 3 to 100 million. There were three types by the So, you mentioned the genetic diversity that focuses on our genes of our individual individuality or individual species, the biodiversity among plants, and also the biodiversity of a common habitats. So biodiversity loss is treating the food sources, leisure and tourism opportunities, and the source of timber, medicine, and electricity. It affects the basic ecological functions as well. So the UN GA or the General Assembly declared the International Year of Biodiversity on December 20, 2006. So this has appointed the Biodiversity Convention Secretariat as the focal point for the gathering. So the biodiversity ah, on this year, 2020, was on May 22. So the theme is International Day for Biological Diversity. Our solutions are in the nature. Okay, another one is the biodiversity also offers foodstuffs and medicines. Natural plants, which is making important contributions to human food supply. Genetic material from wild plants has been used to enhance the domestic crops. So we have here Norman Myers, a noted tropical ecologist, predicts that humans could exploit as many as 80,000 edible wild plant species. So as humans, because of those, um, our unique or we are curious on our surroundings, some of our edible Wild plant species na nandiyan sa ating mga bakuran is ginagamit natin siya as kinakain natin siya or could use that for our foodstuffs or mga herbal plants, di ba? So ginagamit natin siya pang cure sa mga diseases or sickness. However, in the villagers in Indonesia, for example, are thought to use some 4,000 native plant and animal species for their food. Just like, for example, their common um, pool break breakfast here. So, by floating sila ng mga pagkain sa kanilang swimming pool. Then, nice to siya for your your Instagram or social media. Also used for their medicine and other purposes. So, none of these species have been investigated for their possible domestication or for more widespread cultivation. So, the wild bees, the moths, the bats, and other animals provide pollination for much of the world's crops. So without them, we'd, we'd have no livestock in most of the world. Okay, according to the United Nations Development Program, pharmaceutical products extracted from the developed world plants, animals, and microbes are worth more than $330 billion a year. Find the Vinbastin and the Vingrosin success story here. So we have here an example of Madagascar Rosie Periwinkle, <clears throat> uh, scientific name Catharanthus roseus, that contains uh, anti-cancer medicines, which are now stronger and miscible for the childhood, childhood leukemia and this Hodgkin's disease. So this plant species 20 years ago which that leukemia was typically fatal among infants, the so common siya sa mga baby, babies, newly born babies or um, children. Before the advent of such medication, so the remission rate of some childhood leukemia today is 99%, and the Hodgkin's disease was fatal by 98% a few years ago, but now, due to these drugs, it's fatal by 40% today. So this Periwinkle value of crop is around $17 million per year, while this Madagascar receive a little of those profits. So itong Periwinkle is makikita man sa bansang Madagascar. It is unique on that area or that country. Next, extinction is a grooming of a species in the natural world. The species die out as part of the evolutionary process and are replaced by others, often on their 
own descendants. So in this extinction, like for example, this animal, it dies a long time ago. So it happened to survive a long time ago, but on this current at, or at this present because of the climate change, so they are not tend to survive. So the extension rate in the undisturbed ecosystem continues to be reduced to about one species per decade. decade. So may mga species, animals or plants, na, na, na nawawala per decade. Nevertheless, human effects on biodiversity and the ecosystems have accelerated the trend over the past century, possibly causing countless thousands of species, subspecies, and varieties to extend each year. Besides, the loss of the land area is a serious issue is the loss of a large contiguous areas. So a general term for this is a fragmentation of the habitat. So a growing habitat into a small isolated patches in which this habitat could break down that reduces the biodiversity because many species such as bears and big cats or any other mammals need large territories to subsist. So as you can see here in the picture, diba? So uh, pinutuloy yung mga trees and forests. So parang na tanggal siya. So there is a fragmentation in this area. Also, certain species such as the inland forest birds successfully reproduce only in a deep low woodland far from the edges, edges and the human settlement to the predators and the invasive species often spread rapidly following edges of the fragments into a new region. So another example of fragmentation that separates societies into the fragmented communities, rendering them more vulnerable to devastating events such as the hurricanes or diseases. Except under the cir uh, normal circumstances, a very small population may not have enough. So as you can see here in this picture, so there are some birds who are passing by the road, diba? because they uh, experience mga stress or mga natural calamities. Also, we have here that we are encountered, diba? So may nakita kayo sa balita or news na may lumabas na ostrich na nag tumatakbo sa ano yun na subdivision sa Quezon City na tumakas sila sa zoo kasi wala na silang uh, makain doon. So wala na mga tourist or mga uh, bumibisita na mga tao na nagpapakain sa kanila. So na-stress sila. And then may iba doon doon na may peacock, diba? Na pumunta sa gate ng isang bahay doon sa Quezon, so saan yun siya na pa'y sa Metro Manila, saan siya. Okay, a major threat to the natural biodiversity in many areas comes from the species that were accidentally or deliberately introduced. So it is called a variety of names. So it could also be alien species, exotic, non-native, non-indigenous, and pests. But, or they are invasive species. It is called and organisms that flourish in new territories where they are free of predators, diseases, or the resources constraints that may have controlled their natural environmental populations. So note that not all native animals expand their introduction, like for example, the peacocks. They have been introduced in many cities or in the zoo, for example, but in most cases, they prefer not to flee and not to remain in the wild so these invasive species are not actually alien. The word alien, they were coming from other country, then transfer into that uh, planet or that country at about the same time. But they are carrying most of the un un uncontrollable invasive species from the other countries. So for example, invasive species in here in the Philippines, so the Eurasian tree sparrow, so Pastor Montanos, ang kanyang scientific name, so, sa local name niya or sa Bisaya is Langgampari, di ba? So, it is an invasive species coming from, or it is in, introduced by some Spaniards, di ba? So, yung mga Kastila noon. Binala nila tong um, bird na to from their countries. Then, another one is the giant cane toad or this Rinellia marina. So, wala pa din ito siya nung una. Then, ngayon is marami na sila, di ba? Because they are reproducing more and more. Next is the carabao, the 
Bubalus Bubalis Carabanensis. So, ito yan siya. Next is the Golden Apples Nail, the Pumasia Calaniculata. That's the scientific name. Next, the Nile Tilapia. So, this Tilapia is called as the Oreochromis Nilopicus. Also, the Broad-Headed Catfish, di ba? Or, sabi siya pa is Pantat, ang local name. Yan siya. Clar Clarias Mac Crossifalus. Then the guppies or yung small fishes. Guppies na nasa mga kanal, di ba? Uh, Poecelia reticulata. And then the American cockroach coming from the America. Prairie planeta. American. And lastly, the common plecostomus. So another fish. Uh, Terigo le... Uh, Tergup lechites. Pordalis. So yun siya. Ang some example of Invasive species can be found in the Philippines. Okay, we have here the ESA, or the Endangered Species Act. One of our most effective mechanisms to safeguard our biodiversity and environmental integrity. It not only protects rare endangered species, but also helps the cons to conserve our biodiversity among plants and animals that maintains an entire biological ecosystem and retains the significant ecological resources. So this ESA provides the recommendations for identifying species at, ri at risk, guidance to plan for their recovery, helping landowners find ways to meet both economic needs and the needs of endangered species, and lastly, introducing steps to protect biodiversity and habitat. So this app recognizes tree rates at risk Endangered species are deemed an eminent danger of extension. Endangered species are likely to be threatened and then at least locally in the near future. So we have this Endangered Species Act to save, to conserve, and to preserve biodiversity among plants and animals. So dito manlalaman natin ano na yung mga endangered species na threatened, critically endangered na siya, na akakaunti na lang yung Lahi nila, so ganyan. So we have here some examples. So the IUCN or the International Union for the Conservation of Nature identified that among the top 50 critically endangered animals in the Philippines by the IUCN red list is our national bird, diba, which is the Philippine eagle. So critically endangered na talaga itong Philippine eagle because yun nga, uh, mahirap a uh, very uh, complex or lisudjud put ilang pagpadaghan. Kaya I think uh, what I've learned about them is once uh, how many years na sila mag uh, may young or this uh, eagle young uh, ch or chicks nila is pag nanganak sila yung mother Philippine eagle is isa lang talaga yung lalabas na itlog para sa kanila. Then, may ibang mga tao na dinadak sila, inahunt sila, para may iba is may kakainin or yun siya. Other critical endangered are the fresh Philippine freshwater crocodile, number two. The third is the tamarau. Fourth is the Walden's hornbill. Fifth is the Visayan warty pig. Six is the Philippine cockatoo. Seven is the negro's bleeding heart. Mostly mga birds. Eight is Philippine naked buck fruit bat. So ito siya is bat. Uh, nine is Philippine forest turtle. Ten is dinagat bushy-tailed cloud rat. Eleven is the hawksbill sea turtle. Twelve is the Philippine tarsier. Thirteen is the Philippine spotted deer. Fourteen is the sulu hornbill. So that is a bird. Another bird. Fifteen is necros fruit dove. 16 is the flame-breasted fruit dove. 17 is the giant clams coming from, uh, can be found in the ocean. 18 is the Cebu flower pecker. Uh, that is another bird that, uh, from the word, it's flower. So they are more on pollinators on flowers. 19 is the golden cupped fruit bat. And then lastly is the number 20 is net coral. And, and then so on. There's a lot of Species that unders the red list of the IUCN and is critically endangered animals. Okay, that's our wrap for our lesson seven discussions. I hope you learned 
something about discussion. So this would be our, your sec second exam, last coverage. So thank you guys for listening and have a good day. Bye. And meeting.